What's up guys? Today we're going to be going over what we use to film all of our videos. Now you might think that we use a normal camera, but actually we decided to go with something a little bit different. With the new updates in technology with the iPhones and phones in general, we are using an iPhone 15 Pro. And the reason we're using this is because these phones are now able to be shot raw. Basically everything that you can do with raw, you can now do on an iPhone. So we thought, why not make that work? And how we do that, is we film with this monstrosity. And today, we're gonna to be breaking this down and explain what everything is for and how you can use it for your own videos. This one might be a little bit more expensive, but we're gonna go over cheaper options, alternatives for something like this for whatever your workflow is. You ready? Let's get into it. Before we begin, everything, every little piece, every little bit of gear that we are going to be describing in this video will be listed down below, a place where you can buy it, and I'll be going over the prices for everything. So let's get started. Let's go with the heart of this whole thing, which is the rig itself. This is a small rig brand. What that comes with is this little frame right here and the handles. It also comes with this little holder. It's called a power bank holder, but basically it's just like a little cloth and it squeezes down on it. Now, the package I bought, you could buy different kinds of packages for this, like different things that it comes with. Like, so for example, look at this. this one came with like a little mini mic, a little light, the handles, whatever. This whole, oh yeah, and this, which I actually love, and this is what we use for filming this little tripod. So this entire rig package all came together at $170. Now, that said, there is one where it's just the frame and the handles, and that goes out for 60 bucks. This is just such a versatile piece of equipment. There's so many different portholes, different places to screw things on, and when you're doing a crazy lit build like this, it's really important to have many options for mounting stuff on, because even the handles at the top, have little screw holes for different like, places to put these little screws. I know I sound unprofessional, I don't know what the fuck they're called, <laughs> but there, there's just so much versatility with this whole thing, and that's what I absolutely love about this. So if I can make a recommendation, it would be go, to go with this specific one. I mentioned before that the, the frame that you get comes with this little clamp that holds you know, the battery in, but depending on what you're doing, you're gonna need a couple more. So now these are also a smaller brand. You can buy other ones from other brands, but these, this is two of them that I kind of bolted together. And that's the cool thing about all smaller products is that they're super versatile and you can there's bolt holes on all sides. So I was able just to like go back to back and just screw them together. So it was really cool. Each one of these is 24 bucks. A little expensive for a clamp, but hey, you know what? You can go get other ones. That's pretty much all you'll need as far as rig. Now, moving on from that, we have the next most important piece. Now, a lot of what we're gonna be going over with you today is trial and error, what we figured out didn't work, and the correct option to use. So when we describe something, it is because you really should use this specific one, and we'll describe why. So this right here is probably one of the most important pieces. This little splitter is a Belkin 10 gigabit per second four-way splitter. Now, the important part with this is the fact that it's 10 gigabytes per second. When we first were building this rig, we were trying to use a dongle that was six gigabits per second. Now, when you're shooting in RAW, pretty much you only really need 250 megabytes per second speed capability. But for reasons I can't explain to you, whenever we use the five gigabit per second dongle, it just fudged up the footage and we'll go into that more later. So it's important to have a splitter that is capable of 10 gigabits per second. Now this one is really good because it's pretty cheap. It's pretty straightforward. There is a hundred watt compatible input. And now that is also really important because you cannot put the data cords into this because this is not, this does not have high data transfer speed. So this is power only. So if you get this, make sure you remember that. Now, it just has three other ports and it's pretty self-explanatory, that's what it is. We have it mounted right here, goes right into the phone. 
perfect, good to go. Now that is $42. Regardless, if you're going for a cheaper build or more expensive build, I would say go with this either way. It is $42, it's not that expensive, it's a reliable piece of equipment, and I would just say screw it. Just get, get something that you know is going to work, it is not going to fail you. The next big piece here is the hard drive. This is a Samsung T9 hard drive. Single terabyte, but it has two gigabytes of reading and two gigabytes of writing speed. The reason why we use this hard drive is because when you're shooting in RAW, there's so much data being transferred at any given time that you need, your, your phone cannot handle the amount of data that's going inside of it. Plus, you're gonna fill up all of the space on your phone like immediately. For example, when we shoot for an hour, that's about 800 gigabytes worth of data. Your phone likely wouldn't be able to hold that, let alone be able to transfer it to there. So that's why we use this, and that's why it's important to have something that has a high rate of reading and writing speeds. This is a single terabyte, so we almost use up in this entire drive just for one shoot that takes an hour plus the film. This one alone is $120, not so bad. If you're wanting to go for something a little cheaper, you have the T7, which is one terabyte, one gigabyte writing and reading speed. So it's not that much different. But ultimately what I'd recommend to you for anything that you actually need is the Samsung T5. Now, I recommend the T7 because I was looking on Amazon today and I could not find the T5. So I don't know if they don't make it anymore, but the only T5s that were available were like $400. So there are a bunch of other hard drives out there, but Samsung will be the, one of the most reliable and best things because if you ever had a device that corrupted its data, that is the worst thing that could ever happen to you. So that is not something that you want to cheap out on and Samsung makes great products. So I would just say go with something that you're going to spend a little bit more money on, but you're going to be you're going to know that everything's going to be okay at the end of the day. Onto the audio. This mic is the Rode Video Mic Pro and it is $250, but it's a really good mic. Rode makes great products. I would highly recommend getting a Rode something or another because it's <clears throat> also, at the end of the day, gonna be the most bang for your buck, the most common, easiest to get. That's what we use for sound. Uh, there's a lot of different options on it. It powers itself. There's a plus 20 decibels, minus 10 decibels, so you can really gauge everything that's going on around you. It is a shotgun mic, so it is very direct sound. So if you're pointing directly at something, it's going to catch that more so than everything else going on around you which in both situations, that's what you're going to want. And even though we have this mic, we like to have other forms of audio, including these little DJI things. Now, I will say, these things are fucking awesome. We love them. This little package comes with two transmitters and one receiver. These DJI things are really good. We love them. The sound quality is great. The battery life is crazy. You can actually record directly to the receiver itself and then just download it as a file later on. One thing with sound that we ran into that was a big issue and we could not figure out why was we were trying to plug in the auxiliary cord, like the 3.5 millimeter, like that you would use like just to plug into the camera and it wouldn't work. So now you're thinking, well, you gotta use the iPhone one with the three black lines. Yes, you're right, but it's more than that. So <clears throat> I don't know if it's the same thing for Androids or older iPhones, whatever, but at least for the iPhone 15 Pro, in order to connect an audio device, so let's say, for example, this mic connects into this, right? Which ultimately connects into the phone. You need to have an adapter that has a DAC chip in it, basically an Apple. Now this is super important or else it's not going to show up on, it might show up, but it's only going to show up as headphones, not a microphone. It's very important and it's super easy to find. They're super cheap. They're like, I don't know, I think this was $12. On top of needing a 3.5 millimeter jack with three black lines, basically the extra black line indicates that there's going to be a microphone on top of it being a headphone device. Regardless if you have headphones or not, and it's just a microphone, if you're plugging into an iPhone, it needs to be the three black line. So you can't really see it here because I got it all wrapped around, but we have uh, an adapter going from this mic that turns that mic into a three black line because this is just two black line, which is standard for putting it into another camera. But this turns a two black line into a three black line. And then we plug that into the adapter that has the DAC chip inside of it and goes right into here. And once you got that, you're all good to go. Sounds a little complicated, much easier than it actually sounds. On to the power bank. When you're shooting in RAW, not only are you using so much data at any given time, you're also using a shitload of power because how much data is being transferred is, it just uses a lot of energy. This thing gets super hot, your phone gets hot, 
you need something that external that can feed it power. So whether you've got to directly plug into a wall or whatever, depends on how long you're filming for. It's always a best idea to have some sort of external power. I like to use Anchor. Anchor is a great brand, just pretty much with everything between cables and batteries, whatever. But this is an Anchor 10,000 milliamp or 10 amp hour power bank. But yeah, so it's kind of cool because there's two inputs and they're, each input acts as an output as well. Three actually, uh, two USB-C and then old school USB port. Another thing that's really important to mention that we found as a problem is if you are shooting with the Black Magic app, which I would highly recommend you do if you're shooting in RAW, it is free. There's a lot of really cool options on it, a lot of great things. It basically just digs into all the settings that you would ever want in like a normal professional camera, like the one we're filming on right now. And it just digs into your phone and it just presents all the settings right then and there. It, looks, it literally looks like you're filming on a professional camera just because of everything is just right there instead of having to go through the, the stupid iPhone camera app and like dig through everything to try to find. It's, it makes it super easy and simple. And the best part is it's free. You like free. But if you're filming on that app and you have this your phone plugged into an external power source, if for whatever reason that power cuts, say for example, the battery dies, it will trip this whole system up and it will stop filming, which isn't a horrible thing if you're, you know, if you're sitting right here, but if you have a your rig set up somewhere, and you're going for a long film time and that happens and you're not aware of it, then it's going to stop recording. We had that happen in the middle of a shoot once and it was very bad. Uh, so just be aware of that. Uh, we already went over the cables of what you need uh, for the audio. The power cable, you just use any cord, any cord that's not gonna be messy too long and you can just kind of like wrap around something real quick. If you want to go with the even shorter cable, do that. I mean, it's just kind of like, again, this is all customization, so it's literally whatever you want. What is important for cables are the ones that go, that are transferring data. So for example, the one that's going from the hard drive to the splitter here. Now, a little overkill, but this cable is capable of going uh, 40 gigabytes per second. It's a lot. But if you use just a normal cord, which we also found out the hard way, a normal charging cable is not capable of transferring data up to certain speeds. It may sound obvious to some of you. It wasn't to us. All right, now this one is very specific to what we're doing, but it's more so talking about the website that has it. So with the shoot that we're doing, filming in the studio, we need a much wider shot, not necessarily wide all around, but like just wider this way. And we need an anamorphic lens for that. Now we live in a day and age where you can buy anamorphic lenses for your iPhone. How awesome is that? This is the Sandmark 1.33 anamorphic lens. Uh, it works great. All right, unless you're really good at math, you're probably asking how much is this whole thing going to cost me? Well, I will tell you, it really depends on, again, what you're getting, what you want your stuff for, like what's, what all you're gonna put on it, because what I, what works for me is probably not what's gonna work for you because whatever you're fucking filming. Let's say the price of all of this without the DJI mics, because I feel like that's kind of unnecessary, it is $787, this whole build. Now again, there are, like I was saying, cheaper options. Now with D the DJI mics, it would be $935. The iPhone 15 Pro, which would be the only reason to have all this because the iPhone 15 Pro is the only one that could shoot in ProRes RAW. So if you don't have that, this, then there's no point of getting the pretty much this right here, which takes out a lot of the price. The iPhone 15 Pro, the lowest storage model is a thousand bucks. So let's say this rig, as you look at it without the uh, lavalier mics, it would be $1,787. But now that is a very versatile rig that you can do a lot of different things with. It can be a mobile rig. It can be a static rig. It can be, it can be your phone. You know, like there's so many things you can do with it. People are like, why wouldn't you just get a normal camera? Well, because I would still need to be buying all this equipment anyways, for the most part in some way, shape or form. But on top of that, I get all the perks of having a phone and it's just kind of cool. This is just what I wanted to do. It's kind of just a cool project more than anything. But if you check out the footage, it really does look good. It's all around a really cool project and it's uh, something that you can use in a lot of different situations and it's a really small little get up too because if you were to do something like of this quality for let's say, what's this camera? For Sony A7 IV, it'd be a much bigger rig, bulkier, and just kind of more of a mess. I don't know, I like small, versatile things, so this works for me at least. Now you might be saying, hey, I don't have $1,800 to spend. What can I do then? Well, I got you on cheap. If you don't plan on shooting in RAW, or if you don't want to spend the money, you know, the only reason I shoot in RAW is because the guy behind the camera right now makes me shoot in RAW, so that's why we have all this shit. But I got some good news. It gets much fucking cheaper 
if you don't. And let me explain it to you. So this cheap version can be compatible. This cheap version of the rig can be compatible with any phone of any size. It just really depends on the shooting quality that you want to have that said phone is capable of. Let's go through this. Let's start with the rig. The, just the rig with the handles themselves for $60. If you want to go even cheaper than that, personally, I would say stick with the small rig because of how versatile it is. But if you don't plan on mounting a bunch of bullshit on it, you can obviously go with something much cheaper, like a $20 rig. The one I'm referring to is the Ulanzi, <laughs> Ulanzi U rig, which is basically just the frame and there's the handles are like right here. Now, if you want to spend a little bit more money and get the rig that has the package of the mic, the lights, I'd recommend that. But if not, you can get Rode Video Micro Compact for 40 bucks. So as I was saying before about the hard drive, you don't really need this thing. Uh, regardless, I would spend a little bit more money to get something that's gonna be reliable, it's not gonna fail on you because that's devastating. The cheapest option I would go would be this T5 if you can find it. I'm sure you can find it somewhere, it's just not on Amazon for cheap. But as far as like any sort of connecting cable that you would be using, I would keep that what it is because you do want better quality and things that are going to have that data transfer speed that you need. Again, the charging cord could just be in fucking charging. Again, we already mentioned the battery. There's a $20 option at Anchor. Anchor makes great products. Either way, I'd recommend not getting a battery with a lower power rating than 10,000 milliamp. Now, if what you're doing needs 11 liter mic, let's say you're doing man on the street type stuff like interviews and you just need to quickly a mic on somebody a good cheap option as compared to the dji ones that we actually used to use are these cinco brand lavalier mics now it also comes with two transmitters and one receiver uh these things work great they're a hundred bucks so i wouldn't go any cheaper than that or else you're kind of getting out on reliability but they got great battery life so i'm sure you're asking how much is this going to cost me so again whatever you're using this for but this whole thing could be as cheap as $148, that's pretty much all you really ever need. If you're wanting to shoot raw, the cheapest option that you're gonna get that's gonna be reliable to you is gonna be about 300 bucks, which is actually not so bad considering what it's capable of, but you do need an iPhone 15 Pro for that. All right, hope that answered a lot of questions for you guys. Uh, if you have any other questions, please mention them down in the comments. I will make sure to look at them. Um, also, everything that was in this video will be down in the description below with links and pricing included. So please take a look at those. All these things are, oh yeah, we're not being sponsored by any of this. So all these products are things that I would personally use and want to use. But yeah, thank you for watching guys. Hope this was educational. I will see you later.